around two years ago, I created the CyberSpark system, a system that wasn't really limited by any kind of shape. I could use any kind of shape that I wanted. There's one problem, okay? None of those bays were good. <laughs> I mean, some were, some did stand the test of time, but others didn't. So I went back and I fixed up some of these old designs, completely revamped them into dash bays. Now I've done this before with my last Lucifer dash and Lego base has also done it quite a lot of times with his Beyblades. So let's check out three more bays that I upgraded to be more modernized and better. The first one is my old Ragnarok. I think it goes without saying this thing was a travesty, had terrible stamina, terrible weight, looked questionable. So here we have Ravage Ragnarok Dash. This is of course a stamina type based on Ragnarok, I think that goes without saying. And as you can see, the blade is already radically different from the original. Instead of being three bladed like Glide Ragnarok, it's now two bladed and looks a lot more like Blaze Ragnarok. And you probably just saw right there that this thing has functioning wings, something that the old version didn't have. This Beyblade uses the H bracket base, something that I used on my Wizard Arrow, and I teased in my last video that this guy has a functioning wing gimmick housed in these gaps. How it basically works is that we have a Technic Brick with a pin, then a Headlight Brick with a tile at in here, and when the wing is getting pushed out, it hits the end of this tile, and then when it goes in, it rests against this stud. For some reason, one side goes further out than the other one, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Since realistically, this isn't going to cause a big difference in the performance, but it doesn't do that on the real Ragnarok, so I call this guy a win. Everything else is very similar to Ragnarok, super round, it's orange, you got blue center, these things that are supposed to be like the Ragnarok heads, and they can they can do that. Um, it's not a gimmick, but hey, it's a thing that you can do if you want to do it. For the chassis, we have 1S Dash. It's a new chassis, and I gotta explain this really quick. So, we had the original 1S, which was originally called 1S Dash, but then I upgraded the design, and then changed it into 1S, and now this is 1S Dash. I'm not confusing at all, I swear. Alright, so we already know that the original 1S is a circle and basically nothing else. But this one is a circle within a circle within a circle. And look, more circles! Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of circles on this guy. I didn't think you saw that. But yeah, this thing is a bit on the lighter side, but not in the same way as this. This was like 10.77 grams. This is like 11.77, so it's a little bit better and a little bit more in line with what you'd expect. And the tip is called spike. If you look in the middle, there's an itty bitty little spike right there, and that's the main tip. Now this thing is a little bit more mobile than I would have liked it to be, but to be honest, the stamina on this thing is still pretty good, and I already built it, so shut up. But yeah, that's basically it for Ravage Ragnarok Dash. This thing is so much better than the old one. It looks a lot better, it performs a lot better, has a functional gimmick instead of that, like, weird manual mode change thing I tried to do. If you want to watch that video, you can find it in the- I'll put it in the description. I'll put all the old videos of these guys in the description below, just in case you want to compare them. So now let's move on to Minaboros. Where did that thing go? The blade for this guy is, once again, very different from the original, no longer being super reliant on tape. Here it is right here. It was super reliant on tape, and it was just super fragile, and it wasn't the lightest thing, but still not that heavy, and this thing fixes most of those issues. We have a lot of clear stuff in the back as well, blue center, which looks pretty nice. Then we got these parts right here that are like this very nice slope, I really like that. And then you have the main point right here. Now this thing is similar to Minoboros, but it does have some differences that makes it kind of more like Apocalypse in a sense, which honestly is kind of cool. But it still is very, very close, and of course, no doubt about it, this is the superior design, Ultra. Moving on here, we have the 4A chassis. Um, it's like an Excalibur kind of thing, one side's heavier than the other, so it's kind of off balance. And it's in a nice magenta color in reference to the magenta oval disc on the single air Minoboros. And for the tip, we got Quake. It's that half square, half round tile that moves pretty unpredictably in the stadium. Putting this thing together, it actually looks pretty cool. There's a lot of different colors on this guy, but I feel like they go together extremely well. There is one problem with this bay, however, and it's that it is very fragile. Not the design itself, the shape itself is okay, but I mean the pieces. So this is not just normal brown, it's reddish brown, which is like a newer kind of Lego brown. And in case you guys don't know, these color of pieces break all the time. Luckily, I have a solution as I have made a recolor of this thing. 
So this is the random booster volume run recolor, but now it is the dash version and also has 4B instead of 1B, since I'm trying to phase 1B out of the entire system. But obviously this isn't the stock combo, so we're gonna grab this um, orange 4A from Gaia, and I built a quake tip with a trans orange uh, tip at the end, which I think looks pretty neat. But overall, these things are pretty cool. Maybe there's a bit too much brown on this thing, but you know, I could always go back and change the color scheme if I wanted to. So now let's move on to the final Beyblade, Fafnir. The original Forge Fafnir looked like this, by the way, and that was the first Beyblade that I scrapped, not even kidding, at least in this system. It was just, again, light, fragile, especially the chassis, the tip was terrible, so an upgrade was definitely needed for that guy. The blade is, of course, Forge Fafnir Dash, and it is, of course, in a three-bladed shape using the same exact base I used on Night Shield. It has gold contact points, which are a bit sharp because Fafnir isn't really like a perfectly smooth circle. It does have some kind of spiky parts. And then on the dark blue sections, I have some putty. I know it's gray, it's not like blue or anything, but it's the only kind of putty I have, so I work with it. And then, of course, you have the top design, which is, um, it's a top design, I don't know. <laughs> And yeah, I know that people don't like the cores, or at least some people don't like the cores on these things, but shut up. But yeah, overall, this thing is pretty solid, not overpowered, thank god, because it has an axle connection, so, you know, it can't burst off the top. But it's still more than beatable, but still very good to use. And then we got 1S Dash, again! This time it is green, that's kind of it. And then finally we got Rise. Unlike the actual Rise, it has a spring-loaded disc on the outside, something that I feel like should have been on the real one. Since in my opinion, if Fafnir is known for two things, it's spin steel and spring-loaded drivers. And no, I'm not gonna call this thing Rise Spring or Rise Plus or anything, because I, I just don't care. But yeah, it has decent life after death, it is a bit tall, but it does work. And that's basically it for this guy. So that's basically it for these guys, so now let's quickly weigh them. Let's begin with Ragnarok, I know you can't see the numbers, but I'll just read them out. So the blade is 17.18 grams, it's pretty heavy actually, okay, you can kind of see it. The chassis is 11.72, so yeah, it's a bit closer to the standard chassis weight. And then for the tip, we have 1.49 grams. The completed combo of this guy is 30.4, which is really, really solid, definitely better than the 22 grams on the old version, I'm not even kidding. So now for Minoboros, this guy's blade is 15.39, which is decent, I guess. The chassis is 12.62, which is really good. And for the tip, it is 1.5. This guy weighs a total of 29.5, which is a little bit lighter than I'd like it to be. But for some reason, the recolor is actually a bit heavier at 29.83. Luckily, this is the one I'm going to be using in battle, so uh, yeah, we have that. And then finally for Fafnir, this guy's blade is 16.14, the chassis is 11.7, a bit lighter than the red version for some reason, and then the tip is 1.51. Hey, this is technically the first metal tip, springs are made of metal, there you go. And this guy weighs a total of 29.33, which is the lightest of all of them, but to be honest, if it was pretty heavy, it would probably be overpowered. So yeah, that's basically it for the Dash Beyblades, and I'm having this guy here, because why not? He fits. Overall, they're pretty cool. I'm not gonna battle them in this video, because this thing has been going on for a bit too long. So I'm gonna battle them in the next video, maybe in like a tournament style or something. So yeah, comment, like, subscribe, stuff like that, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, now that all the cool people are left, I'm going to show you guys some other redesigns I made that aren't really worthy of a full review. Uh, Kerbius has some color changes, it's a bit cleaner now. Um, Longinus is a bit more stable on the upper blades on both the chassis and blade. The colors are changed, uh, it's more stable overall, and the chassis is fully purple, and we got Destroy now. And uh, Hercules has been totally changed, the color scheme is a lot better, and the tip is orange and the rubber band has been relocated to the bottom. It's also a proper double thick bay. I could call this uh, Hercules Dash, but to be honest, I don't really care.